Hi, thanks for making all the way to tip number seven. Thanks for hanging in there. Today we are going to be talking about the run PowerShell script action. Uh, this is a newer action within the last uh, year and a half. Uh, the beauty of this is how much it's actually improved over that year and a half since they first introduced it. So back before we had the run PowerShell script step, we used to have to use the run uh, command line step in which we would uh, either get really fancy and we would go ahead and make a really long command line that would call PowerShell and then do a bunch of stuff in PowerShell and spit it back out to the registry or to a, a different key. I actually blogged uh, something about this a couple of years ago to get the hard blocker out of a XML file using the run command line step. And the reason we like to get all fancy and long like this is because it wouldn't require any content. Uh, we didn't have to have a package associated with it, which means less chance for error or has mismatch when you're you're downloading content and it just makes life a whole lot easier uh, when you're troubleshooting. If you don't have to have content, uh, you can make a quick change to the task sequence and run a test again versus having to change a, a script and a package and update it. So when they came out with the, the run PowerShell script, uh, it was great because we could then just call PowerShell script in instead of having to uh, use the command line to run PowerShell uh, dash file and point at a PowerShell file. Uh, but then uh, it became a whole lot better. They added uh, the ability to embed an entire script right into the task sequence. So one thing I've just been working on recently is testing the custom actions. Uh, so basically I wrote a PowerShell script that connects into the task sequence environment and it actually goes ahead and creates several files. It actually creates 12 files, uh, 6 batch files and 6 PowerShell files and then populates them with the information that I want in there. Uh, so the beauty of doing it this way is I'm creating all that content with an embedded script So I don't have any package which makes troubleshooting really easy Another great thing that they've added is you can have a PowerShell script Which is can be as short as something like this and you can then dump the output Into a variable. So this example is actually getting the system uh, locale so this way I know which language pack is installed in which language I need to uh, put back on after the in-place upgrade. On this step, you can either call, you can uh, point at a package, just like you could before, and then you can uh, put in the script name, or what we we're talking about here is we can actually embed the script. And then you can place parameters, so you can customize the script even more, and you could use the same script for several things, and then just pass through parameters, but this is, the nice thing that they added not that long ago, the output to a variable. They also added the timeout feature, uh, which is very nice, and the run as a following account. So this step has iterated a couple of different times, adding additional functions um, all through user voice, which is really great. So if you have anything else you need added, go ahead and go out to user voice and put it out there. Uh, so today's tip, running PowerShell scripts in your task sequence and we look forward to seeing you for the next tip.